Okay, so we're going to do, this is called an enrichment video, and what we're, we're trying to do in this video is to give you the opportunity to see how to do synthetic division on linear factors that have a coefficient greater than one. So everything that we learned and that I guess that's on our tests and that we're going to, uh, that you're responsible for uh, to learn, right, the bare minimum, was that we did not have an x value uh, in that so we didn't have a number in front of that x value in the, the divisor. So what we're going to do in this video is we're going to look at, well, what if you did want to use synthetic division to find quotients? We had been relying on the long division method. So let's take a look at one of these. So here's the idea when we're, multiple, when we're dividing uh, expressions and there's a number greater than 1 in the coefficient spot. We need to make that coefficient spot equal to 1. So in this case, there's a 2 floating around right here in this position. And I'd like this, okay? to go away. So the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to divide everything by that 2. And what I mean by everything is everything in the first expression, everything in the second expression. There's going to be a big divided by 2 going on everywhere. And again, the reason that we're doing this is so that this one right here goes away. I can't have that 2. So here's what ends up happening. I end up with 4x to the third plus 6x squared minus 2x minus 3. And we're dividing that expression by there's the x to the first, the 1x that we wanted, and it looks like 1 half now. Okay, so now I can set up my synthetic division like we did before. Right, here's my synthetic division symbol. Okay, let me fix that line. Okay, synthetic division symbol. And I'm going to say my a value, the value that's going to go out here that I'm going to repeatedly multiply along the problem, is 1 half. Right, if I wanted to turn this into a 0, I'd plug in a 1 half here. So I'm going to put a 1 half out there. And it looks like 4, 6 is x squared. There's x and number. I didn't have to put any zeros in there. That's important to remember. Okay, and I'm going to go along, and we're going to do our multiplication. So I'm going to bring down my 4, and I'm going to multiply. Half times 4 looks like 2. Add down the column, and that becomes an 8. Half times 8 is 4. I'm going to add down the column and get a 2. Half times 2 is 1. Okay, I'm going to add down the column, and I'm going to get a negative 2. Right? So this is my answer right here, almost. So let's block off our remainder. Our remainder is that last term. And so again, if I count backwards, this is my coefficient, first power, second power. So I'm going to write 4x squared plus 8x plus 2. Now here's the big catch. Whatever you divided by up top, in this case we divided everything by 2, the remainder needs to be multiplied by that number before you include it. So in this case, negative 2 times that 2 is going to give me a negative 4 over my divisor, which was 2x minus 1, my original divisor, 2x minus 1. So I'd say this is the problem. So there's this little extra step where you need to divide everything away, and then at the end, remember that the remainder must be multiplied by that. So I want to do one more of these with you. Here's a second one, okay? Um, so actually, you know what? We're going to do one that's a little bit more challenging. This one's going to have a lot more fractions in it. So same idea. I'd like this 3 to go away, so I'm going to divide, every, divide this by 3, which means I need to divide everything else by 3. And if you notice, what's going to end up happening is we do not get a lot of nice numbers. This is 1. So let's not forget about that. Okay. And so here's the problem that I'm actually going to divide. 2x squared minus 1 third x minus 7 thirds. Right? Not a nice problem, but we can do this. Okay. And it's x plus 1 third. Okay? So again, what you're going to ask yourself is, what value of x would make that turn into 0? Or if I solve this set equal to 0, what would it come out? And the answer is negative 1 third. So that's going to be my number on the outside. Okay? And we're going to bring down our coefficients. 2, negative 1 third, and negative 7 thirds. Okay? So let's go through. Bring down my 2. When I multiply negative 1 third times 2, I get negative 2 thirds. Okay? I can add down the columns, and if you notice, negative 1 third plus negative 2 thirds is going to be negative 3 thirds, which we can more easily write as negative 1. Right? Negative 1 third times negative 1 is positive 1 third. Right? So I'll even put a little plus sign there so we remember it's positive. Negative 7 thirds plus 1 third is negative 6 thirds. Oh, wait, negative 6 thirds. I know what that is. That's negative 2. So I'm going to replace this with a negative 2. Okay? So I just turned my fraction answers. I simplified them as I went along. So again, let's put up our bar. And this, again, is my coefficient term, which means this is my x to the first term. So this is really 2x minus 1. 
and I, I multiplied everything up here by, I'm sorry, I divided everything up here by a 3, which means I'm going to multiply this remainder by a 3, and it's going to become minus 6 over 3x plus 1. And I would say this right here, this expression, is the quotient with the remainder for the synthetic division. So with these problems, we're doing pretty much the same thing. It's just that the numbers that we use can't be in the original problem. We have to divide everything away so that my divisor, the second number, is always 1x to the first power. And so we fix that, and remember to multiply back the remainder at the end.